Hi, my name's Hervé, aka The Count from The Count and Sindon, and today we're going to be looking at our track After Dark featuring the Mr. Jets. We never had a So this is the track After Dark that uh, we did with the Mystery Jets, uh, it came out in 2010 and it came about because we became friends with the Mystery Jets, the band, and uh, Kai, who used to be the bass player in there, lived two doors down from me, so we would kind of go backwards and forwards visiting each other and then decided to do a track for our Countless Indian album. And uh, I went over there and listened to some of Kai's demos and one particular track had a mid late that is actually the chorus of this. I thought it was very catchy and I said, let's kind of start with that as the chorus and build out from there, bring, bring Will in and then um, we'll develop it from there. So one day we went, I was in my studio there in Kai's house. Kai has a little set up there and uh, they were working on the, the verses and putting their guitar bits together and I was constructing the uh, the drums and the and the synths and stuff. And then we just went backwards and forwards for two days, touching things up and making suggestions to each other. And then uh, eventually we had the finished result, which is which is this. Okay, first of all, we'll look at the drums and we'll start with the snare. This is a kind of Afrobeat, UK funky, what have you, snare pattern that we were being quite influ influenced at the time. We wanted to create this kind of Afro indie disco record. And there you go, so this is a little sample of a snare put in by hand. That's how I tend to do the drums. I don't use drum machines. A little bit of compression. Tiny bit of EQ. Normally I would take a lot of the bottom off, but I imagine the reason I didn't is because it was lacking a bit and I wanted to keep some of the punch at the bottom end, but normally I would chop a lot of the bottom end off a snare, making, leaving as much room as possible for any lower end stuff. Back here we have the Go-Go's, heavily EQ'd again, just keeping in the, the uh, EQ, EQ range that I think helps along and getting rid of anything that I don't need. It's quite extreme there, but sometimes you just don't need those elements when it's mixed in with other things. Cowbell, again, not a drum machine, spit in my hand. Sent left, give a bit of width, a little bit of EQ there, taking off a bit of the noisy bottom end a lot of these samples have. A standard live tambourine. That's a loop of live. A bunch of things that I've done with tempo things matched. And again, EQ, a tiny bit of side chain to just give a bit of pump and life. Again, not as much as I would do on my more straight up club stuff then. Back then it would have been a lot more pumping. Kick drum. Nothing fancy on the pattern, just a straight 4-4 driving 4-4. This, this is uh, sending the, the side chain pattern to the elements. Not much EQing on here. Seems to have uh, been okay at the time. Shaker. All these are just layers upon layers to make a really good percussive groove. My favourite, the gong. I always like to see the gong in. Rain stick is kind of like I use as an organic riser reversed to meet here and then fading out. Just with a track like this, it felt nice to add that riser that was organic. Hi-hat. Simple little pattern to keep it driving on long little, little skips here. That would be the end of the eight there, as you can see where the, it's a bit more lively there. Progress this across there. Here, 
towards the end. Nice little loop with the collapse. That comes in at the middle eight, livening up that towards the end. Creates variation in the rhythm. And again, as we'll talk about later, the middle eight just helps to take your mind elsewhere and your ears elsewhere before coming back with the chorus. Keep the chorus fresh as you're coming towards the end of the song. You've heard it a few times. This is a little loop. Again, normally I would make the loop by hand of different elements. But sometimes they just uh, they just sound really good. This one probably came in early to, to give bulk to the to the rhythm and to get things rolling, but it just sat so well I've kept it. And, yeah, the, and there's the rhythm coming all together. see here this drops out halfway through the verse and that's just the kind of tag team with a, another sound which is these elements here that come in um, synth elements it's just to keep the variety nice and moving and keep the interest levels there okay that's the drums next we'll look at uh, the guitar elements and the bass elements now these were recorded by Kai and Will, the Mystery Jets lads, uh, they're, uh, uh, they're, and they're set up and then bounced out and brought round and then we, I incorporated them in, in here and uh, chopped and changed them a little bit um, in terms of, for example, this intro here. I've edited the uh, the drums, um, sorry, I've edited the bass, underpinning the guitar here, and this is just to help create anticipation and not tire out the riff as well. So we've got this whole um, building intro, which is really nice, before the drums kick in and everything else with percussion. So you can see I've cut those by hand. Just what, how and when I felt they've the notes have suited the groove. A little reverse up there. And the guitars, <coughs> again recorded by the guys and then dropped in. A little volume dip here. That's just to create this dynamic here where it, the, the guitars kind of spring up, creating a bit of energy and everything can jump in. Here, see the guitars jump up there. Now on the verse, we go into the verse here. You see there? There. Now these are just, as you can see, I've taken the whole guitar bits and just cut in Again, like the bass, the bits that I think are nice and work to highlight and push the verse forward. Uh, it's just a good way of keeping the guitar element in the track without having it constantly going through, which it might get a bit tiresome if that happened. So there you have it going through again and again. And it's on a different channel and it's EQ'd slightly different. Stereo delay, 1814, create an interesting little, uh, nothing too complex, but um, the double stereo. Wav waves doubler which features on a few things it just I just use it more as like a exciting interesting element won't be on the bass the bass has got a, a bit of compression a lot of EQ it's too bright and taking up too much of the the middle and the top so that comes off and when you you know when you bang it all in it, it fits right but Another EQ there, taking off the bottom end and just a bit of extra there. Guitar's got a little bit of side chain, and again this, this uh, doubler, which I really like from Waves, having a bit of excitement there. Right now I'm just going to have a quick look at the intro section, the, at the um, some of the effects, FX that we use in there to sort of push the track along, create bits of anticipation and rises up to the chorus to help create impact. Here we've got um, a couple of uh, MJ's uh, synths that are just uh, layers underneath these chords. If we have a look at these chords quickly, you're here. This is the intro chords. And now they bounced out these little um, synthy bits to, as you can hear, create some movement and uh, interest 
uh, and they fade out once all the other once the rhythm once some of the rhythms and the bass and guitar because you don't want to get too, too cluttered it would just noise up noisy up the background so then um, this comes in and they've done this little riser themselves to get us out of that intro into the main groove there as we progress through the track there's some simple white noise risers or uplifters as some people would call them. It's very simple and you just do that. And it's the same thing reversed and stretched a little bit so it has a longer tail when it comes short here to rise up quickly and then punch in. Just time stretch the tail. That's what I like about Cubase. You can just, a few clicks, you can get time stretch up and do it all on screen. It's, it's brilliant. And then it comes in again there. This will probably be for Yep, that's uh, pushing into a chorus, rising up there. A few others here. Simple. No tails really needed on these ones, so that would come in. And then there's a, an, I've done a little outro riser to give us a little bookend on the sort of beginning and end. And that's got a little vocal shout on the end to put a full stop on the track, you see here. If, no, we'll see if we get it on the right channel. That was, as you can see it, there's the uplifter on it. Tweak slightly differently, uh, so it punches through the mix a bit more. A bit more volume. A bit of reverb as well, because it's the to create a nice tail as the track, track outros. And uh, stuck a vocal on the end, because it just worked level-wise and stuff. I wanted the same reverb. Now we'll look at the synths that are at work in the track in terms of strings and the plucks and stuff that are used around the chorus. Now originally the strings on here would have been played on um, a plugin called Ra, which I bought years ago and have subsequently changed computers about three times and don't have any more. So I've just recreated that and here is a sample tank for the pluck again don't know where that is gone and lost on previous computer changes. And this second string is just very similar to this one um, to back that up. Um, I basically pulled up instances of Nexus, which is a, such a massive variety of sounds. It was very easy to find and replicate them. So the string is just replicated. got a kind of marimba-ish sound, fairly close to the African pia thumb piano that I think we used. And then the second string comes to bolster it. So those are the elements of <coughs> the chorus and pre-chorus sort of pre that foreshadows the chorus there. Um, there's note variations on here in terms, in terms of create variety, the string here. I've taken some of the notes out so it's not a full riff underpinned by the marimba. But when it all kicks in, all the notes are there. So you get this kind of subconscious, hopefully, noticeable lift. And I added a Korg M1 here. to uh, That's basically just to um, add highlights and bolster the fact that the chorus is happening, send in a signal that this is kind of a different moment. And uh, as you can see, I think that's basically, I just wanted a high stringy sound so I've been a little bit lazy and just put that in and kept it. Um, but it does exactly what I want it to do, which is, which is great. That fills out the chorus nicely. So the re remaining synth work that happens is in the middle eight, where obviously the vocals melodically change, and um, we have some bass elements in there as well, dip down a bit to kind of calm things down. Again, sort of helping to build towards the outro. Um, we've got this silent middle eight riff that I did to um, create this kind of 
swirling texture and create movement and take the mind somewhere else. And then similar bits from, um, from the MJ boys doing some little string, slowed down, sort of almost strings of life, slowed down things here. The intro chords are used again. kind of brass, brass stabs. They're the first bits that come in and it kind of starts, reverts to using elements of the intro. A bit of a breather there before the vocals start building again. Yeah, so you can see we've got this swirling arpeggio there. Two little bits here that sort of fill this space before the vocal comes in with these strings and the little high strings that the MJ boys did there. Then it all kicks into the outro. Um, the nice thing about this outro is that um, Will sings this extra bit instead of doing the kind of standard jump straight back into the chorus. It came up with this little bit which I really like there added a really great amount of variety. So if you listen here, you can hear the vocals on their own. So you change the melody in a really, really nice way. It's just, you know, it's very easy to change the melody once you have that, but I think you did a, it's a great. And again, we've done a kind of uh, looping, looping um, effect. To sort of, I suppose it's kind of a, a nod to the the dance elements of what we're bringing to it is, you know, doing these chop ups and stuff, but not um, to the detriment of the song as a whole. I think it just really adds something nice. We did the same thing with the chorus here, as you can see. Just kind of doing the kind of repetition edits. A little bit of that double stereo on there tiny bit of EQ. These guys um, wanted to record the vocals themselves. They got they had quite a good Neumann, Neumann mic and uh, so they basically did those and bounced, that, bounced out the elements and I just chopped them up and brought them in. And uh, here's another little bit for the outro of the vocals where you can see it's changed it up again. That's Kyan Will doing harmonies. And again, just a little simple edit. A little, bit of, a little quirk there. Okay, so now um, that leads us on to the rest of the vocals. We start with the chorus. It's a reasonably straightforward pop record arrangement. You've got um, open with the chorus, 16 verse, short eight chorus, 16 verse chorus. Uh, quite a cool uh, mid late. I think it breaks down really nicely and then really builds up nicely and then we have this nice when he builds up again with the chorus there but as we just discussed we've got this great little uh, twist on the on the melody that Will did before we go back into the uh, chorus and then we've got the outro and then we're kind of done with that. As we can see here these are kind of single stereo tracks for these vocals. Uh, Kai and Will recorded them themselves at Kai's two doors down. He's got, they had a really good Neumann mic and they, they said they prefer to do them themselves and they know what they're doing recording their vocals so that was it's fine and then they just delivered them along with the guitar and bass bits. Um, so there wasn't really much for me to do apart from using this little Waves Doubler that I used to like using a lot. I don't really use it so much anymore because there's been a lot of development in you know vocal plugins that are just for uh, specifically built for plugins. A bit limiting on that. Don't know why I would have done that on that, but um, yeah, slight variations. You've got the doubler on there, and then and these uh, other elements have taken it off to create just a bit of a uh, different feel. So there's nothing on there. It's just more what they did. A little bit of EQ on that mid late section just helps create a shift to your ears. Same with the outro, none of that doubler stuff. Just these little things that help create sonic variety. Hopefully people pick up on. So let's have a look at the master bus. Fairly simple. A lot of people 
don't like touching the master bus. They like to do all the elements and then they'll come back and do a mix down and then they'll get a stem master or they'll get something to master. I've always just liked starting with stuff on the master bus and creeping it in because it helps me get into the zone of what the, you know, the, the better the track sounds, uh, the faster the track sounds good, the better it, you know, encourages you to finish, which I've found, I've always been a finisher and always worked quite quickly. And I think that's an element that helps. It doesn't work for everybody, obviously, because some people have a more traditional, uh, different stages, create the elements and then mix the elements. Um, so this basically was the L2 ways, which I still use and love, and I always use that. It's my favorite one of those. And then this weird little thing, which was a favorite of mine for years until I think DirectX, you couldn't use it anymore. So I got this wrapper, Phoebe FFX4, which is a freebie thing. It means you can wrap this in and get it into the project. And I've always loved using that. That's really cool. I, it's, um, it's just because I'm used to it, it's probably similar to any other um, compressor, but uh, you can create really heavy sort of breathing, whomping on the master thing, which used to be quite a good fun thing until basically everybody started doing it. Um, and that's how the master bus works on that track. Now I would use something like Ozone and have a stereo expander and um, maybe um, some EQ from that. So this is the glue, which is a, a really great compressor that I sometimes use now. Um, I maybe would have used that on something like this track if I was doing it now and not the uh, Timeworks one. Although I still love it. It's just, just things just, you'll probably find it as well. Things just kind of go in and out of favor and you just forget because you try something and you think, and then you go back to it and go, wow, that's really good. Um, t Rex, um, the mastering bus, uh, mastering suite thing I haven't used for years, and a friend of mine was using it the other day, and I reminded me how great that, really great that sounded, sounds. Um, so it, there's a variety of different options that you you know that I would use now, specifically these two, and uh, I'm still on Isotope Five, although I've updated this thing. Um, Nowadays, uh, if I'd have done it now, I'd have probably gone to here, stereo image, and gone wide with bass intact. Something simple like that, and just gone as, as wide as necessary. It just adds a real width. It is a stereo image, so you'd expect that, but it's, got, it's, it's better than basically all the other ones I've used. Thanks for watching. You can check me out on the usual socials, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And uh, please check out the 10 years of cheap thrills compilation that's coming out soon.